Right now, thank you for joining us. Let's look through what the pages are saying, the front pages of the newspapers across Nigeria. We'll be joined this morning by Bode Badebo. He's an online editor at the Leadership Newspapers. Good morning, Mr. Badebo. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure as you. All right, now let's begin with your paper, the Leadership Newspaper. On the front page of the Leadership Papers this morning, the big story says, um, new policy direction, 1,358 projects threatened. Uh, CBN stops intervention funding. Uh, Anchor Borua's program, six others to go. 4.6 mi uh, million farmers, companies, others to repay 5.25 trillion naira. And then at the top of the paper, we have 144,910 cases pending in federal high courts. Northern lawmakers to rebuild Tudunbiri with 350 million naira. Sultan demands justice. Works Ministry wants budget increase to 1.5 trillion naira. 13.6 billion naira fund Governor Sule to construct 15 kilometer road in each council. Agency wants passengers over luggage handling at airports. Apex Bank suspends cashless charges as scarcity spreads. CAF 2023 awards Osime Oshuala Nadozi emerge African Players of the Year. Um, at the top of the paper, we see here Northern lawmakers to rebuild. Tudumbiri with 350 million naira, Sultan demands justice. Um, Mr. Badeba, I would like you to react to that story, talking about exactly how the government has reacted to the chaos and the crisis, unfortunate incident that has happened in Tudumbiri, where members of the Nigerian army mistakenly, put that in a, a, a quote, quote unquote, mistakenly, killed over a hundred Nigerians. Would you say that the federal government has handled that as it should? And do you trust that any you know, investigation would actually be carried out? In fact, what would be justice in this scenario? Well, yes, we can all keep our fingers crossed. Just yesterday uh, in Faiway, Medugui, uh, Borno State Capital, we are President Bola Tinobu, attended or declared open the annual Chief of Army Staff Conference. He also made mention of the Tudumbiri uh, tragedy. He, and he also promised that there will be investigation All right. so that uh, a future occurrence will be stopped. So I believe government will do something. Well, what is important is uh, carrying out the investigation won't be enough. The outcome and implementation of the recommendation of the investigation will be the most important thing in this circumstance, so that at least we can put a stop to a future uh, occurrence. All right. Now let's look at the front page of the leadership newspaper. There's a headline there that yeah. I was saving, you know, saving the best for last, it would seem. Leadership announces Tinumbu Man of the Year. So first of all, congratulations to President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu for emerging the Leadership Man of the Year. And as the editor of the leadership newspaper, I'd like you to share with us you know, what were the mod modalities with which, you know, you came to the conclusion that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the man of the year? You know, very interesting uh, announcement. Since we made the announcement yesterday, there have been uh, some sort of a mixed reaction, especially on the social media, Twitter uh, particularly. And it uh, actually showed that a lot of Nigerians don't understand, you know, the modu operandis of newspapers, the world over in arriving at persons of the year. Remember, at a point in time, the Time magazine announced Osama bin Laden as the person of the year. You know, and people are wondering, why would Osama bin Laden who was accused of uh, masterminding the 9-11 bombing on the World Trade Center in the U.S. be man of the year? But this is the issues. A person of the year is that person whose action, inaction, you know, affects people's thoughts, people's actions, you know, people's life. Well, it can be positive or negative. In the case of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, you know, he was voted not because he's the president. We look at a wide range of factors. How he even emerged the candidate of the APC in the first place against all odds, remember, Remember there were reports, ah, the outgoing President Mahmoud Buhari was against him. He was not interested in him. And how Tinubu, you know, withered the storm, emerged the candidate in the first place. And you also remember during the electioneering campaigns, his uh, physical fitness was an issue. His, uh, you know, 
religion affiliate religious affiliation affiliation was an issue you know a lot of uh, mistakes and gaps here and there and you know people were mocking him a lot of things happened and against all odds again he emerged the president and again on the first day of his assumption of office look at how he, he unilaterally pronounced the, the first subsidy you know gone and that has changed a lot of narrative in nigeria since then as we speak so given his antecedent as a politician, given the way he emerged the candidate of his party, given the way he won the election, and given the way he has, you know, been pronouncing policies, which have also shaped a lot of things in Nigeria as we speak, economic front, social front, that, you know, uh, end in the leadership board of editors uh, uh, verdict as person of the year. Uh, so all of this that you've mentioned, just to quickly clarify, all of these that you've mentioned, him being able to weather the storm, the policies that he's implemented. Are you saying, I mean, you did mention at the start of your answer that the man of the year leadership, uh, man of the year awards can either be positive or negative, depending highly exactly. on how the person shapes, you know, the, the, the lives of others. Exactly. In this case, would you say exactly. that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's one is positive or negative? Well, so far, he, he has uh place nigeria on a certain on a particular trajectory which is already you know shaking the foundations of this country so it is now led for nigerians to feel the impulse whether positive or negative and i can tell you most of the things he has ruled out if religiously implemented to the letter these policies can actually you know place this country on the path of development you know forget about removal of first subsidy and the pains. They told us these pains are short-lived, they are ephemeral. They will come and go, and this will bring in sustainable development. So for us, we are giving the president the benefit of the doubt. The yeah, benefit but, but, of the but, doubt. I mean, is, 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 the media, is the media meant to give the... actually place Nigeria on, on the trajectory of development. Mr. Bradibo. So they are positive as we speak. Mr. Bradibo, is, oh. how long is the media meant to give um, politicians the benefit of doubt. What do you mean by benefit of doubt? You know, is, is that the role of the media to give, you know, people that, you know, you're meant to be critical of, you're meant to, you know, interrogate their policies and their issues. What, what do you mean by benefit, benefit of doubt? Because this, the president was in Meduguri yesterday, like we you know, did mention, you know, and there's a video, of course, you know, of him speaking with the tra one traditional rulers there, where he said, you know, that, you know, the death of these 100 plus people by the Nigerian army's mistake, you know, is you know, the will of God, you know, and I mean, it shouldn't the leadership be questioning things like that and questioning, you know, the, the chances that these people's, you know, death will not just go in vain. Isn't that what the leadership should be doing instead of giving the president the benefit of doubt? Well, to be fair, we are all human beings. The president admitted that accidental bobbing ought not to have happened in the first place. And he also publicly said there will be investigation. And after investigations, there will be consequences. So these things cannot happen in a twink twinkle of an eye. It cannot happen in a day. It cannot even happen in a week. There are processes. So you allow those processes to take their course. And after that, you expect the consequences, you expect the results. Now, the role of the media, as you said, is to track all these pronouncements and make sure that they happen. And if they don't happen, we become critical yeah. Yeah, of the I, leadership I, I, of the country. I'm, I'm sorry, so you're not, are not, you're not being... Um, yeah, I, I don't want it to seem like you are being, you know, grilled here, you know. <laughs> You're meant to be exactly, part of the conversation exactly, this morning. Exactly. But, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you get my point. You know, that if you, like you've said now, that you would follow up and, you know, if things don't, you know, happen the way that you expect, then of course you do properly interrogate it. But it's not the first time. Exactly, exactly. It happened in Iran in 2017. It's happened in, in uh, Zakibia. I mean, it happened, you know, with the Shiites. It happened multiple times. And I don't remember the leadership newspaper calling out the federal government outrightly to say that you failed in any investigation that you said that you were going to carry out with the Buari administrations, you know, the times that happened there. And so you, I'm sure you would understand why, you know, when you say that 
you know, the, the media would interrogate at this time. You know, if you didn't do it before, how, how are you going to do it now? But it's all our responsibility, right, including I, mine. So, so let's not put you on the spotlight. Let's let's go to the Guardian this morning. Hopefully, no, 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 there's no. some. Let me still address the issue before we move away. Okay. You know, the, the leadership person of the year award has no relationship with all what happened in Kaduna State. Very true. Just last week. Very true. Just last week. That's one. Then number two. Uh, it's not correct that leadership has not been calling out the military for certain failures. You need to go and check our editorials and news reports. From, in fact, when the war against insurgency started in 2009, the leadership newspaper at a point under late President Mohamed Musayar Adua was the most critical, the most critical of the Aradua government. So being critical is also with accountability and responsibility. It's not, right. it's not for showmanship. I absolutely. It's to ensure that it's engendered development, it's engendered changes All right. for positive Mr. Badabu, development and yeah. for good governance. Because of time, once again, you know, I, I don't want it to seem like we're, you know, interviewing you uh, here. All right. <laughs> so let's go to The Guardian. <laughs> you right. know, I, I want us to touch a little bit about, you know, two stories here. It says that Nigerians grown as basic needs uh, exceed real income. Um, it says uh, also Nigerians spent 61.08 trillion naira on food and other household items and services between January and June 2023. 90% of Nigerians cannot afford a healthy diet, which is, I think, very true. Um, jail awaits those forging a credit loose signature, says Commissioner. And also PDP Labour Party demand fresh poll as uh, Sim Fubara summons emergency exco meeting. I also saw that the PDP has asked that the APC or the new APC House of Assembly members um, have their seats vacated and a fresh election be carried out by um, um, INEC. Nigeria in darkness as national grid collapses again. Mr. Kbadebo, please quickly react to what's going on in, um, in River State with the defection of these uh, House of Assembly members and uh, the PDP asking that fresh polls be, committed, uh, be uh, conducted um, and, of course, their seats be declared vacant. Uh, let's get your, your reactions to that. Of course, yes, some week is alleged role in it also. Okay, I think what's happening in River State is not new. We, we should all expect that to happen since, you know, the Cold War uh, became public about three weeks ago or so. And uh, the PDP needs to understand that it does not have power to declare seats of lawmakers vacant. There are laws. It is the Assembly that will declare those seats vacant according to our laws, not the party. Not the party, even though even the assembly, I don't know whether the assembly will be able to do that because of the factionalization of the factionalization of the assembly. You can see 27 to about five or so. But then it's just a kind of a comedy of error of some sort because uh, for those trying to dissociate uh, Honorable Minister of FCT, he has some wiki from that. I just, you know, uh, making the whole thing to be comical. Of course, you don't need anybody to tell you that Wiki is behind everything. And uh, it's just a, a contradiction because these are the things yes, on Wiki preached against when he was governor of River State, that he should not be bullied, a governor should not be bullied, a governor should not have a godfather and the rest of them. But today, a yes, on Wiki who served as the governor of River State for eight years and now Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria still want to be the godfather of Rivers' politics. Even though people say, yes, he, he, he deserves it because he brought the governor. You remember, he brought the governor from the civil service. The governor is not a politician. He brought him from the civil service. He ensured at all costs, he enthroned him as governor of River State. And this is the result of what we have been talking about, about impunity. The moment we throw away our democratic culture for impunity, we are bound to witness, we are bound to suffer all this kind of crisis. And the victim, the ultimate victims are the people who will be denied good governance, who will be denied peace, who will be denied development. Because in an atmosphere of chaos, there can be development. So uh, I hope this will be resolved quite on time so that development and peace can return to rivers. And unfortunately, again, the so-called intervention of President Tinubu is not, the fruit is not everywhere to be seen. I don't know what kind of intervention he made, but then you can see 
that the parties, the warring parties, have not shed their sword so far. And this will affect development in rivers. This will affect, right. affect the peace of the people. All right, uh, Mr. Gbadebo, thank you so much for joining us with the papers this morning. Very interesting stories we've had there. We look forward to seeing more updates. And as we get more updates, we'd like to have you join us back again. Thank you so much.